In 2013, Ron Gilbert wrote an article called If I Made Another Monk Island, and he made 17 points, which detailed everything from whether it would include voice acting to the size of the team. And with the announcement of Return to Monkey Island, Ron himself has added a note at the top of the article. It says, Now that Return to Monkey Island has been announced, it's important to note that a lot of my views, but not all, in this post have changed, but not all. Don't take anything in here as more than a historical moment. Quoting anything in here as canon will just lead to tears. That's not really how the internet works though, is it? Uh, I'll post the article in the description if you're interested in reading that in full. Now, point 12 in the article has got a lot of people wondering about the canon of the games that followed Monkey Island 2 La Truck's Revenge, and whether they will be canon in Return to Monkey Island. Here's the quote from the article. It will be called Monkey Island 3A. All the games after Monkey Island 2 don't exist in my Monkey Island universe. My apologies to all the talented people who worked on them and the people who loved them, but I'd want to pick up where I left off, free of baggage, in a carnival. That doesn't mean I won't steal some good ideas or characters from other games. I'm not above that. Now, Murray is in the trailer, and he says, Ron Gilbert told me he'd never make another Monkey Island unless... A lot of people are assuming this will be the case, that all the other games are now not canon. And let's face it, we have no more information other than the fact that Ron's most recent tweet suggested the return of the lookout from the first game. But let's assume that this will be a direct sequel to Latrux Revenge. In this video, I'm going to name my top five things Return to Monkey Island should steal from Curse, Escape and Tales of Monkey Island. Mostly going to be Curse of Monkey Island because really that's the good one. Number five is voice acting. Dominic Amato is already confirmed as Guybrush. I've got to get that map back or we'll never find Blood Island. Thanks, as guys. is the lookout. You were a world the lack of voice right acting in 1 it and 2 a were a result of a hardware limitation and in a game driven by dialogue, it's really a no-brainer to just include it. Number 4. Art style. The art style in Curse of Monkey Island was ace. Uh, we don't want a 3D Monkey Island, I don't think, well, maybe you do. I don't want a 3D Monkey Island. The problem with Escape to Monkey Island going to 3D, like many, many adventure games that did the same at the time, is that you're going from one of the best looking 2D games to one of the worst looking 3D games. Not to say that, you know, Escape from Monkey Island looked terrible, but when you look back at Monkey Island 1 and 2, even with the pixel art, they look amazing. Whereas those games that tried to transition, like Broken Sword did, they've aged really badly. Now, maybe if they upped the budget like 10,000% like and made it Horizon Forbidden Monkey, it might be interesting. But I'd rather Rom was concentrating on funny jokes and puzzles and not on how to make realistic lighting effects for the spitting minigames. Now, we know it's not pixel art, because we've seen the trailer, and whilst I love pixel art, it does have that element of pixel hunting which is best avoided in these kind of games, really. Number three, direct control of the character. This was a feature in the remasters. There's enough knobs and buttons on a controller to allow for both click and walk at the same time. Even in the remasters, you could choose which one you wanted to do. If you wanted to click your way around, you could click your way around, or you could walk freely using the left stick. I'd even say keeping a simpler verb coin as opposed to six or nine distinct verbs is preferable. You can still have challenging puzzles without wondering whether to push or pull the rubber chicken with the pulley in the middle or whatever it is. Number two, mini games. No, bear with me. The ship combat and Julian banjos were a really good form in Curse of Mankind, and some of them could be skipped. Like the, uh, the ship combat, for instance. Haggis would ask you whether you wanted simple get ship combat or difficult ship combat, and you could basically just get through it very quickly. But I always played it on the difficult mode because I enjoyed those mini games. There's the shooting the cannons bit at the start. I think Curse of Mankind is one of the few examples of arcade features in an adventure game actually improving the experience. And it provides a welcome respite from rubbing the contents of your pockets on the world and its inhabitants. Curse of Monkey Island even had an easy mode. Now, while some fans will rail against the idea of a watered-down puzzle, easing some new players in might just ensure the series generates a new audience beyond those who remember swapping floppies like a demented switchboard operator. I want more Monkey Island games after this one. And if that helps, and that helps to sell games, then so be it. Number one, drum roll please. The sport of monkey combat. No, it's, uh, it's Murray. 
Obviously, he is the one thing that needs to return, and he's already the first thing in the trailer. He's the best NPC in the series. He was only ever supposed to be a minor character in Monkey Island 3, but he was such a hit, he made it into the inventory, and later games would pick his character up again, and with good cause. His malevolent nature combined with his disability, if you call it that, is a gold mine for humour, and I'd love to see what Ron does with him. Maybe being knocked off the jetty is the last that we'll ever see of him, but I, I can't see it. I think he's going to be back. Anyway, what do you think of my list? Anything you would like to see from Return to Monk Island, or should it start completely afresh, dispose of everything that went after, pretend it never happened? What do you think? I laughing about anything in particular. Somewhere there's a fish nibbling on my foot, and it really tickles.